All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And thank you for joining very early. Um, this is the case of you asked for it, what I ordered for, what I'm getting. It promises to be an exciting morning. I'm personally looking forward to it. I have um, personal testimonies of um, a vision board. Oh, my goodness. I want to actually share a picture with you that happened the same way it was. Um, oh, to count. Okay. Let me see. Okay, let me give you a co-host right so that in case you go off at any point. So I was going to share a particular picture that I had on my vision board two years ago that happened exactly the same way I had it on my and I didn't know until when I took the picture. Uh, maybe at some point I'll find a way to download it so I can share it anyway. So yeah, this is um going to be a good one. And Father Lord, we just open up our hearts to your creativity. We actually open up our heart to dream with you, just as the way you have it. That's the real vision. That's the real goal. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you would, with our hearts and your, our hands, paint the picture, the colors that you want to see on earth. Mm -hmm. We say your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in heaven. And let it be on earth. Let it be established from our hearts and implemented. Let your policies, let it spread across the world for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Chrissy and Coach H, take it away. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, everybody, for having us, HP and I. We're so excited to be here this morning. And we're even more excited to, you know, like just have this session with you. We've been preparing like in the last two weeks. And we just trust that God is going to, you know, make this as beautiful as we're hoping that it is and even much more beautiful. Um, I'm going to share my screen in a minute. So that we just kick off. If you can see my screen, let me know. Um, okay. There you go. Can everybody see my screen? Um, yes, we can see your fine slides. <laughs> Thank you. So um, this morning, we're just going to be visioning, as we already know, which is like the title of this workshop and this teaching moment. Um, it is as far as your eyes can see, which is what the Bible says, right? Um, so here's what like the quick agenda is going to be. Um, we're hoping that we can fix all of this into the two hour space that we have. And having said that, I would just take it, um, HP will take it from here. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I actually can't look at Chrissy's face this morning without smiling. Like she's such a gorgeous girl. <laughs> such a gorgeous girl and her voice is so soothing like I'm like I can just listen to this forever good morning okay so I want us to if you can turn on your video I want us to do a quick exercise anyone that can if you can't that's fine I'm just going to move back um if you uh, so that you can see me properly yes I'd like you to stand up where you are if you can stand up where you are and I want you to stretch your hands forward like, see, like what I'm doing? Thank you. I can see some of you doing it. And if you then can interlock your hands like this, interlock it. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're stretching our hands forward. We're interlocking it. We're going to do it four times. So stretch your hands forward and interlock it. One. We're stretching our hands forward again. We're interlocking it the second time. And we're stretching our hands forward again and we're interlocking it the third time. Who noticed that every time they interlock their hands, they put the, the same thumb up? Did anyone notice it? Do it again, just do it again. Did you put the same thumb up this every time? If you did just indicate, you know, by waving, same thumb up. That's what usually happens. You would usually put the same hand or thumb on top. Now let's try and do it and do it with the other hand, right? So I always do my right. I'm going to try and do my left. So stretch your hand forward 
and try and do it with the other hand. So you see that even when you try and do it intentionally with your other hand up, it is difficult. Did you notice that? Even when you said in your mind, I want to change what I did, it wasn't as easy to do. So one of the things I want us to be aware of, especially as we're children, Christians and children of God, exactly. She said, if Abisala said it felt awkward. As we're children of God, is that we have patterns. We have patterns, meaning that if you're looking for 2023 or your future to be different, nothing is actually likely to change if you don't change. What is likely to happen is that you are likely to continue with your unconscious patterns. So if you have a pattern of putting, even with your thumb, you know, using one particular hand every time, imagine what other patterns you have. You have a pattern that you, you know, use with your money. You have a pattern that you use with your relationships. There's a saying in psychology that how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you're someone who, you know, for example, you, you set goals for yourself at the beginning of the year, even if it's in, oh, I want to, you know, diet, let's say that's mine, I want to lose 10 kg. And unless you put in intentional steps, patterns, disciplines, ideas to change, you are likely to achieve the same results as you achieved the year before. So I, I did that exercise so that we all open up our minds. We all come to this conversation with our minds open because there's a way that as children of God, we like to think that, oh, yes, he's in control. Yes, oh, you know, life will happen. Yes, life will happen. But you are God's. You are the ones on earth that have been put here to change creation. And if you cannot change yourself, change your patterns, if you can't achieve the results you set for yourself, then creation that's eagerly awaiting for us to change it is doomed. Do you see that? So the responsibility on your shoulders when we do this is not just for you, it's for your impact in creation. And so, of course, we just wanted, we wanted to put the scripture before you, you know, and have a cup two, three, where it says, write the vision and make it plain. So today, when we're thinking about our visioning, we're writing, we're making it plain. These are not new age things. This is us doing what the Lord has told us to do. We are the owners of visioning. When God took Abraham out and he showed him the stars in the sky, he says, as far as your eyes can see, you are the ones who see things and bring it to pass. I want you to know that. So this morning, come with your full energy. You're sitting at your desk, you're in your house, you're doing whatever it is. Bring your energy here, bring your attention here. Listen to Chrissy. Chrissy is a little genius. I've enjoyed working with her in this past few days. Bring your attention here and let's make 2023 the most exponential year of our lives. And then it will be the least exponential year because after this, we just keep getting better. Yes? Okay, yes. so give yourself a round of applause for being here. And Chrissy, over to you. Thank you so much, HP. Um, thank you for just taking the energy in the room to like 500% in like one minute. Thank you so much. Um, so after um, the, that little exercise, we're gonna do like a little icebreaker as well. Um, and I feel like this starts to set the tone for what we're going to be doing today. It starts to like, you know, get us into that mood, into that space. And the question is, what natural phenomenon do you identify with the most? So what I have here are a couple examples. It's not limited to what is here. Um, when you think about yourself, when you think about your life, when you think about just you, the embodiment that is you, what do you identify with? Fire, rainbow, water, and water is of different types. It could be seawater, it could be bubbling water, it could be anything. Don't, don't limit it. You can qualify any of these phenomenons. Um, is it light? Is it thunder? You know, some people, when they enter into a space, they just crack it open. Is it rock? Is it wind? Is it a cloud? Um, this last bit about white light, I put it there because that is what I identify with. Um, um, it's not just light. It is white light. Like, it is one white light, but when it faces the earth, when it goes through the air, it disperses into different expressions. That is how I identify with light. So um, I want you to put it in the chat box, you know, let's get thinking. I'll give you like 
um, 30 seconds to a minute to actually think about that if you haven't before. When you think about yourself, what comes to mind? What natural phenomenon comes to mind? Because I'm sharing screen, I cannot see the charts. HP, can you see them? Are they coming in? Yes, they're coming in and they're pretty interesting. Rainbow, fire. <laughs> Some people have thunder. <laughs> so they're coming in. Yeah. You know, as you put it in, start to ask yourself, why do you think you identify with this natural phenomenon? It will start to come together as we pro as we progress. You start to see, you know, why all these things are important. Um, if you're if you've said the right thing about yourself, you start to see how they come together. Um, like I said, don't limit yourself to these nine items here. It could be anything not here. This is just what can fit into this slide. So um I should think about that. We just move on already because like there's a lot to do and I wouldn't gonna take so much time here. Um, then here is where we talk about our reflection guide. Did we all do it? Did we all, you know, ref do the reflection? I'm gonna stop sharing to share the, re the reflection guide now. Um, Somebody said, what's our rainbow? Interesting. Both. Um, did we all get to go through our reflection guide? Because it was very important that we did that. Um, we're going to walk through it now. If you didn't do it, this is going to be a short time to do it. But we can, you know, we can, this is the right time for you to actually start to do it if you haven't. If you can see my screen, please let me know. Oh, there goes my best friend who thinks I look like a girl, a daughter. Okay, can you see my screen, everyone? Okay, thank you, HP. I can because you're the only one I can see on my screen. Um I do. We see your screen clouded. Thank you, PU. Hi, PU. Um, okay, so. Here, the, the, the prompt is to rehash your life vision slash mission statements. Um, I believe that, you know, I have a life vision. I believe that many people have life visions and everybody should have life visions. And if you haven't sort of come up with yours, I, we give a few prompts here to say um, it's effectively a three line paragraph and, you know, five at most, you know, um, that just sort of puts together who you are almost like when you open the website of any company and you always see what their vision statement is what their mission statement is you as an individual you're even you're a whole entity yourself as well so um a mission statement is very important now why is this important for you to rehash why is it important at the edge at the point of vision boarding because even as your vision board you want to know that you are not going out of scope you are not um you're not take, you're not pasting, cutting, and just visioning things that you've seen off of Instagram, that you've seen off of the social media, or there is off of conversations that you've had with other people. You want to be sure you are not pulling on elements of other people on yourself. You're actually staying true to your lane. You know, you want to be sure that you are creating from the inside out as opposed to from the outside in. So every time that um you know, I'm hosting vision boards. That is usually the first thing. What is your life vision? What do you, who are you? You know, almost like what is your purpose? And I said that because, you know, I know that this community, we are very conversant with identity statements. You know, some people's one is about 10, 7, 11, 20 pages, but that's fine. But there is a section of it that will speak to what your vision is or your life vision is. It usually is that part that says what is God called you to do and I know that this is something that we used to do every Monday when we are like doing like the CIA work that PU gets us to do where you say what has God called um female 7107 to do you know so you want to ask yourself that what has God called you to do and I give I give an instance of myself of mine um it did actually took me a while to sort of come up with this to say you know I'm a disruptive agent and a mission to guide organization businesses and people to uncover or discover new paths and solutions that make the world a better place literally when I'm doing anything I find that it usually just 
um, falls in here in this mission statement, you will always find me doing something that is in here, is never out of it. Um, whether I'm doing it consciously or unconsciously, I have sort of just learned that. So um, if you have that already, can you give me a thumbs up? I can see the participants list. So if you can give me a thumbs up on your, just give me something beside your, your name. Let me know that you're doing this, you've done this just two people i need all of us to come with all of that energy and just let's get this done for so that we can move on real quick um so the next part of this is the monthly review of the past year you know you have to take notes of moments tasks and things that you've done in the past one year um that i just you know, notable, um, when I want to do this, what I tend to do is um, I go through my phone because I tend to capture moments a lot, whether it's food, whether it's things that are making me happy, you know, just there's a lot in my, if, if I give you my phone, there's a lot that goes on in my gallery, you know, so I don't know if that's, if that's how you work, just how do you navigate that? Is it um, promotion in the year? Just, you know, take note of all of those things. If you haven't already, now is the next to perfect time um we're gonna move on real quick to yeah this is how you do that this is just a template for you to fill out all of that across the month um from january to december and then here is where you sort of review your 2022 goals if you had one um if you didn't set one or if you didn't set any vision board at least you had some goals that you did or some things that you did in 2022, um, did you meet them? And again, this is not the place to feel sad that you didn't get a lot done. No, this is just how you make sure that 2023 is better than 2022. So did you meet this goal? If yes, how? Should it be continued in 2023? Is it a long one? All of that. Um, please feel that out real quick as much as possible. And then what were your peak experiences? As we know, life is full of highs and lows. It's just the way that life is constructed. Um, what were your peak experiences in these areas of life? Family, your career, spirituality, relationships, um, both romantic and non-romantic relationships, self-care, character building, because that's very important for us, even in the body of Christ, especially health-wise in your finance. How was that? you know, were there any peak experiences? Um, please, you should, you, should, you should get that written out right now if you already don't have it. Um, by the way, you can type in this document just in case you didn't know, so you can start to do that immediately. Then what were the value experiences? As we all know, like these usually are you know the point there there are places where we get a lot of lessons and just they just help us to leap onto the next level and we had said here that you shouldn't dwell on the mistakes the essence of this is to take note of your patterns lessons learned, and triggers um so what do you feel as you even write this it's important that you put all of those emotions in there because they capture the essence of the entire experience um, did you overcome all of these experiences yet? How are you holding space for yourself? You know, what are you doing to just make sure that um, these experiences isn't just flat? Um, and to make sure that you're actually using this experience to build yourself and make better decisions in the future. Um, and, you know, that's like the last question here. So you want to answer all of those questions if you already haven't. Um, because in the next couple um, minutes, we're going to be entering into a breakout room where you're going to be discussing this with your peers. And we're just going to be going through all of this together as a group and as a family. Um, so I'll stop sharing now and then go back to the main slides that we were sharing before. Chrissy, while you're transitioning, I have a direct mm -hmm. message from someone who shared her mission and her, and her vision. She mm -hmm. says, I'm a global citizen, entrepreneur okay. with access to kingdom wealth spread across the world. 
The branches of my chandelier illuminate the whole earth and my fragrances shift atmospheres and brings down the glory of God to the whole world. Who can guess who that is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd Winifred, Winifred yeah. So I hope you guys are writing. I hope you guys are writing. You see, there's a there's a power in declaring these things. There's a there's a power in actually going through the thought and owning it, right? That this is who I am. This is what I have access to. This is how I show up in the world. So if you if you didn't do it, take the chance to do it as we're going through the class. And even after this exercise really just make yourself exponential with a friend that was fire she sent it as a dm i don't know why she with a friend you have to copy it and send it to everybody because that's part of owning it just send it let's let's hear it so when we see you we know how to greet you <laughs> now that was really powerful and i just want to say that um you know with the mission statement beats hp what happens is that it just when you embody it so much when you step out even in the marketplace because you know that's where i am when you step out in the marketplace and then you i'm saying that when i say these things even in conversations as in interviews or maybe i'm networking i mean i don't state it like that but you know you pick up just words and just things like that and you throw it into into conversations it literally just changes the energy in the room so it's so powerful especially if you can actually get yourself to coin it into like that three line or five line statements it's like if you think you don't have an elevator pitch to introduce yourself anywhere or anything just get that done that just it, it's it's magical that's all I can say it's so magical thank you for sharing that Winnie Fred um HP will walk us through the wheel of life the concept of the wheel of life and why this is important right now and how that is going to link to things that we'll do in the next few slides HP Awesome, awesome. Please give it up for Chrissy. <laughs> you can just do the virtual claps. So the will of life, right? And um, this concept, I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with it, but the question really every time you see the will of life is the question of how are you really doing? It's a chance to evaluate where you are because it's from where you are that you launch to everywhere, everywhere else, right? And like Chrissy had said in one of the slides, when we look back at our valley experiences, some of our valley experiences are not mistakes. You could have had health challenges. You could have lost loved ones. There's some things that happened to us in our lives that we didn't curate, we didn't choose. We didn't want it to happen. If we had a choice, like, you know how it has been showing up on social media that, oh, we hope that God has removed us from the general's list for this year. Me, I'm on the daughter list. So people are on general's list. So people are on warrior's list, right? You know, you choose. You want to, we all want to be on the soft life list, so to speak. But the wheel of life gives you a chance to examine where you currently are. Oh, Ugunwa, big hug to you. Ugunwa says last year was a value experience. There were some, I'm sure there were some, you know, healed up experiences, especially when you overcame the valley. But we give you a group hug and we know that this year will be much better for you in Jesus' name. The will of life allows you examine all the important parts of your life, right? It allows you examine all the, the, all the things that connect to make your life whole. So every time we're looking at the will of life, we look at things like your family. You know, it's one thing to thrive at work or to, you know, get all the money, get the notoriety, be known for what you want to be known for outside your home. And then to come home and home is lonely and empty, whether it's because you are alone, whether it's because you have strife at home, whether it's because you're going to a separation, a divorce, you have a child who is sick, you have a child who, or you're a parent who is sick. So family, so when we think about your family as one of your wheels or as one of the things on your wheel, you're thinking of the quality of relationships you have there. You're thinking about the quality of communication. You're thinking, do I like these people that I get to do life with? And do they like me? Am I my best there, right? So family is one of the things we'll be rating and one of the things we'll be visioning for in today's exercise. On the wheel of life, we also have your health and your health can actually be the things that you, know, you can change and the things that you cannot change or like the things that happen to you, right? So if there's a health condition that you're currently going through, 
How is that affecting your life? Is it something that you know can be changed? Does more research help? Will more research help? What do you need to do to make that area be a more vibrant area than it currently is? Now, if there's nothing going on with your health, you know, let, you're not sick, but let's say you just want to live healthier, you want to experience life more fully, you want to have more energy, because energy management is one of the major things that, you know, you have to consider in life, your energy is not, it's not just time, it's how, how vibrant is this life I'm living? Am I living it with power? Am I living it with joy? So you want to think about how can I improve that aspect of my life? Personal development. One of the reasons why you all, 93 of us are on this call is because personal development is key. There's something that um, I think it was Einstein that, that um, um, coined this word, it's called IntelliKey. He says, if you put a seed in the ground, the seed wants to grow right? It wants to grow. You put a tiny oak seed in the, in the ground. It wants to become an oak tree. It naturally starts to grow to become an oak tree unless something happens that kills it. That's the way we are. Nobody wants to be the same forever. You, you want to grow. There's something in you that's restless. And so in that sense, how do I develop myself? How do I become better this year than I was last year? And it's not just in things relating to work as a person, as a woman. I remember there was a time when I decided, you guys like my nice earrings, can you see it? There was a time I decided that, oh, I was going to become a more beautiful person. So I was going to become more deliberate about it. And none of that is minor, right? So whatever area of your life that you're looking to develop in, it's good to actually examine it and say, I'm going to deliberately develop it. Your spirituality, I mean, for all of us here, we know how important it is. Spirituality is so, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, the Holy Spirit is just the advantage. Yesterday, I like that. Oyinda wants to become a more beautiful person. Yes, yes, let's go on that journey together. Now that I've seen Chris's hair, I don't I do not do wigs, but this year I'm getting a wig because me <laughs> next teaching moment like this, even if I'm not the one speaking, you know, probably have to highlight me, then I'll do my wig and I'll wear glasses. Ugo, buy me the glasses, right? So, but you know, like spirituality, yesterday I needed fuel. I, I don't acknowledge fuel scarcity in Nigeria because I'm a child of this land and this land has oil, right? So I don't like, I don't acknowledge it. So I noticed my fuel was low and I was like, okay, father, how are we doing this thing? And then I actually heard the, you know, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit tell me, go to Lekki One, go to that filling station. There'll be four cars before you, blah, blah, blah. And I actually drove to Lekki One, went to the filling station. There were four cars before me. I didn't spend two minutes. I filled my tank. And I left and I thought, how do people do it if they don't have Holy Spirit to tell them where to go to, to buy fuel and not join you because you have decided you don't want to join this queue business, right? So spirituality is so important. Spirituality grounds and guides our whole life. So what are your goals there? Where are you suffering there? Are you enjoying the presence of God and loving him and enjoying our fellowships, but you're not enjoying his word, meaning you're not actually knowing him? Is that an area you want to develop? Are you developing yourself, but in a silo? Are you you know, spiritual, you know, when we see you on paper, we see you on screen, but when we come close to you, then, you know, the character does not let it work. Those are things to then say, okay, these are areas I'm going to develop. Then your career, your business, whether it's school, education, whatever it is you are doing that fills your daily time and earns you an income is also something that's really high on your will of life, right? And then your relationships. <laughs> Chrissy, you're flipping your hair. <laughs> then your relationships, whether with your family, your friends, you know, your colleagues, and most importantly, your relationship with yourself. One of the things I, I've had to learn since December is every time I look at myself in the mirror, I'm pretty, I think I'm a pretty serious person, but I've had to decide that every time I look at myself in the mirror, I will smile at my, stop that, I'm on a call. I will smile at myself. Why? Because I can't look at you guys all the time and smile and then forget to smile when I look at me, right? So when you think about relationships, you actually have to think about what relationship do I have with myself? What do I say to myself? How do I address myself? Am I kind? Am I the most critical to myself? Relationships, relationships are a core part of your will. And then fun and recreation. Now, a lot of us don't even know how to play anymore. We don't know how to play. And even for someone like me, that's a confession. That's one of the things I have to learn to do this year. For me, when you ask me, how do I have fun? I read. So I'm not sure whether that's, <laughs> whether that can be fun. <laughs> I read. 
and then maybe the most fun I have is I listen to Victoria Rezi on Friday nights and I, you know, but so how can you add more fun and what does fun look, look like for you in your own life and then your finances. So let me tell you the secret to the, to using the will of life to, to, um, at, to, at, to look at your life, right? In all of these areas, look at it, it's like a wheel. So if you think of your tire in the car, it's a wheel. Now imagine that, let's say concerning, let's say all in all of these areas, the maximum mark is 10 and the lowest mark is one, right? So let's say, let's use an example. And I say, let's say in my family life, I'm happy with how it is. I'm looking to grow there and all of that. Of course, I want it to be more vibrant. I want my home to be fun, loving, ETC but there's a there's still a gap there's a way to grow right so i now say in that i would rate myself let's say a seven these are not real figures this is not me telling you my will of life let's say i rate myself a seven let's say concerning my health everything is good i want to get rid of migraines i want to do this i want to do that so because of that i'm going to drink juices every year i'm going to uh, every day or every other day i'm going to walk at least ten thousand steps blah 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 but where i currently am I'm not happy with it. So let's read that place is six. So my family life was seven. My health is six. Personal development, oh, this is something I'm good at is my sweet spot. So let's say it's a nine. Let's say spirituality. I think, oh, there's always more to learn in Christ, blah, blah, blah. And I think that I can go further in God. So I read myself a seven. My career, my business right now, you know, I just got a promotion. You know, money is coming in from everywhere. I read myself a nine there. My relationships, I think, oh, well, maybe I'm, I'm my sister. I'm still not talking to her. That my boss at work, <laughs> even though I'm getting promoted, I have to do everything over his head, blah, 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 and all of that. So my relationship with my boss isn't great. My relationship with my sister isn't necessarily great. My relationship with, you know, so it's my relationships are looking shaky. So I put myself at a four. Fun and recreation, like I said, I'm not necessarily playing and all of that. So let's say I put myself at a two. My finances, they're great, but I really want them to be greater. So I put myself at a five. Now, remember that this is a wheel. It's like a tire of your car. So yes, you're getting every, you're getting the slides after this, right? I think Christy is in charge of that conversation. But if it's a wheel and it's a tire of your car, right? One tire, and one side is four, one side is two, one side is eight, one side is 10. You know that that tire now looks like a star, right? It looks like a star, it's not a tire anymore. So it can't take you anywhere. It means that you are not moving smoothly. You're not moving well. You are struggling because you're not balancing out all the areas of your life. And yes, you can't achieve, yes, it's spiky, Abisola. You can't achieve entire balance. You can't achieve ba balance everywhere but you can achieve congruence, you can be growing. And once you're growing, then you feel like you're moving positively. So this is the idea of the wheel of life. And when we start to do your vision board exercise and create your vision boards, we'll be looking at each of these different areas, which is why Chrissy said, we're doing this and we're starting from the point of view of what is my own purpose? What do I want to achieve in life? What is, what is, it, what, what is it that will make my own life worthwhile? When I then think about that, then it's easy to then say concerning family, for example, for 2023, what I'm looking for is more peace. And what does more peace look like? It looks like better communication, no drama, not escalating things unnecessarily. Then you get the images that sort of speak to that. You get an image, you put the words that speak to that. Same thing with your health, same thing with personal development, with finances. So you create a vision for this year that is personal to you, that you are committed to seeing through. Excellent, thank you. Christy, over to you. Yes, so we're gonna, um, thank you, HB. At this point, I will forget that I'm a co-host. I'm, I'm also just, you know, doing the thing with you right now. Um, so we're gonna go into um, um, Zoom rooms in about a minute. And there is a prompt right here on what to do um can you see so there are two things that we need to do we um in your zoom room you're going to take turns to talk through one or two of your most impactful reflections from the guide um i saw ugo already talking about last year being a valley um a valley experience yeah it'll be interesting to have this conversation with your peers in the room 
Um, we'll also take turns to talk about your scores on the wheel of life, which is what HP has just graciously walked us through on how to, you know, what it means. So you rate yourself. There's the prompt here that says, rate yourself in percentages across each segment and add your total score together. And then you divide that total score by 800 just to get um, sort of a summary percentage to just to get a sense of what that was like for you last year. Um, you will soon know why all of this is needed. Um, HP has already started venturing into that. So I'm going to open all rooms now and we'll go into the room. Okay. Can I ask you to do something real quick, um, Chrissy? Can you yes. let them take a picture of this screen and the previous screen? You know, because once they go into breakout rooms, they're not going to see the instructions anymore. Right. Yeah, so to remind then please take a screenshot of this right now if you're going to be going to breakout rooms take a screenshot of this and take a screenshot of the next page Chris is going to put up okay. so you can remind yourself what those prompts are in the breakout rooms thank you Pio. um so i'll be going off of the screen in five seconds in five four three two and one so please take a screenshot of this as well. Um, and I'll open all rooms just so that you can start joining them already. All rooms are open, so you can start joining your rooms now. Um, a couple of people came in and out, so they're not assigned. I'm going to be assigning you immediately. You can manually assign them. Um, yes, that's what I'm doing. Gracie, that was quite fast and creative. I sent you a message on WhatsApp to say that, oh, you didn't tell me about the rooms. That's the advantage of being techie. So you did all this by yourself. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> in seconds. See, you don't rub it in. I, send that. I was panicking. <laughs> Outright. Oh, my goodness. There is 15 left. There's 15 of you left, and now get to it in a minute. I also know that some people might be driving. Let me see. <laughs> Okay, there's nine people left. Okay. Pew, should I assign a room to you? No, I'll just be going from room to room. Okay, so. Okay, everybody has a room now. Please join. Somebody just came. I see some people here with our room. So Lubukola, Yvonne, Olatundu, Dukbe, uh, Francis, Haya, Baby. I think they just didn't join. The, yeah. They already they're, assigned. Uh, mm -hmm. um, okay. But everybody's assigned now except PU. Okay, guys. So just uh, click on the 
the notification on your screen to join the room, all of you on the main house here, the main room here. So you can join the sessions. The public driving or the uh, they're away from the devices. Okay, she has to. That is a great tool, um, Chrissy. Really great tool. Well done. Thank you, sir. You are getting New York experience here. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm sitting in my house in Lagos and I'm already in New York. Ha, <laughs> ha, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, do. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for you. To, I, I want to follow you and attend your your weekly meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so everything you learn from your weekly meeting, you just come and dish it, dish it to us here. I will be in the same room. <laughs> um, Chrissy, room 13, Tim Tapa is by herself. Uh, then uh, people haven't joined. <laughs> Uh oh, just we can person. move out to one of the what's her full name? Timmy, where is just now? Tim took my F. I'm not sure. Two people from room 10 and room 7. Sorry, good morning, Maven. Hey, turn back right. Mervyn is on the trend. I find it hard to. Um, Mervyn, what room are you in? I'll be assigned her. Okay. I'm going to join group eight now. How long is this? 20 minutes, right? Yes. And we yeah. are like. I'll come back. Okay. Okay, did you get knocked out? Were you in a room before? Um hi. Um oh, baby, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So I think that's smart and we're able to unmute in the main room because of disruption. So she can only send a chart. Right, but well, um these people I'm seeing, Aya and all these people are, they, they don't have they are probably away from the you know you use an hands free on Saturdays most people, most people use hands free driving okay 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 cooking okay I can't join any group right now it's not like I've not slept all night so I don't <laughs> want to go and rumble oh yes I know okay I know you cannot unmute let me ask you to unmute I have a kiosk going on Oh, hello. Hello, everyone. Um, I was in breakout room eight and I got thrown out. Okay, I'll just reassign you. Thank um, you. Pre -pre. Gosh. Are you still in Michigan? Yes. Oh, and Damlala is in Michigan. I saw her just now. Her video was on. Which Dami? Damlala Alawa, she's also a facilitator. Oh, I don't know her. Hmm. Pri should I reassign you? Were you in a room before? Please, can you type? <laughs> well, maybe if you can unmute her, okay. Yes, I just did. What room were you, ma'am? Hi, hi. Good morning, everyone. Yes, because I was room 14. I really love to go back there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't put me anywhere else. <laughs> oh, my God. I like it. Sorry, Doc. <laughs> this is real. Yeah, so I usually don't use the eater. The eater on. It's mm -hmm. not once the windows are off. It's... But my husband said it was going to be very, very cold today. So we put the eater. Once the eater is on, I'm unable to sleep. Right. Okay. It gives me a day if it's too dry. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to text you something that you can use. Please, that would be so good. 
and somehow I think the um I think the humidifier went off at some point. I, I can't say this is exactly what happened though. There is so I've been up all night. Echo Evangelist, please can you type in the chat? What room were you? Oh my god, let's get on. Um Doc, are you able to assign? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I want to like go around your rooms and just check. Oh, please going. go ahead. Mm -hmm, thank you. Um, Nicola, psycho evangelist, were you here before so I can reassign you to your rooms? You can put the number of the rooms you were in in the chat box. We are in the breakout rooms now. People are doing their reflection for 20 minutes. Okay, you just got here, Echo Evangelist. Okay, so let me put you in the breakout room so that, um, let me see, an available room, and they will put you there, room five. Echo Evangelist, just go catch up in room five. Let's see what you find. Kita, have you been here before? I just got here to good morning. Okay, fine. Let me also put you in a room so that I can just go catch up. I'm sure people will just help you. Let me put it in room nine. Kito, I've assigned it to a room. Have fun. Rebecca, you just came in. We are currently in breakout rooms and doing reflections. Let me know if you would like to be added to a room or you were in a room before, and then I'll put you back there. Hi, Rebecca. Let me know if you were in a room before. So like this is our own little room. <laughs> I'm not good company. I wish I printed it out. I, th I thought I saw PU filling his own on because I'm better with writing than typing. I saw PU filling out his own. I wish I printed mine out as well. All right. I'm going to join room two now. Hi, goodness. Hi, good night. Are you just joining? Let me know if you are just joining. We are in breakout rooms now. Hi, Ubi. Let me know if you are just joining or you'd like to be taken back to your rooms. You can type it in the chat box, please. Okay, I will put your goodness in one of the rooms just so you can catch up. We started a while back. Obie, Obie, you just joined, so, okay, I'm putting you in one of the breakout rooms, just so you can just catch up. Hello, Dieba. Um, I don't know if you just joined. We are in breakout rooms going through our reflections. Let me know. Okay, you just joined too. Well, you are for the six minutes late. The breakout rooms are closing soon, but I'm going to just add you to one so that you can just like catch up on whatever they are doing.
Hi, we are in Nikkei. We are in breakout rooms. Um, let me know if you were in a room before. I'll be more than happy to add it to one of the rooms. Chrissy, did you time the rooms? It will close automatically, right? You have to unmute. You have to unmute. I didn't time it here, but like I timed it on my phone immediately. So we have like seven minutes more. Okay. Yeah. Oye, Nike, were you here before? Um, Oye, Nike, were you here before? Or you're just joining? Okay, I'll add it to a room and let's see if you're able to catch up a bit. We need to have assigned it to a room. Let's try the room. Yeah, it's okay. Anytime. Good. Chrissy, yeah? yeah. I'm muted. I'm, I'm I'm supposed to be able to broadcast the remaining. Yes, but um, it will. Yeah, it will all the B. Um. Or oh, except you want to send a me a message. A message, yeah. But it was here and then it's disappeared. Let me see. Send to everyone in the meeting. Um, let me see. Broad, just click on the breakout rooms and then you will see broadcast. Broadcast, got it. Rooms, yeah. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. You see? The amazing Toby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Toby Alasaji. Um, if you are just joining and you want me to add it to a breakout room or for reflection, I'll be more than happy to, but we only have about five more minutes out of 20. So if you want to stay with us, I'm happy for you to also stay with us. Let me know your preference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Toby. I'll be more than happy to have you here. Oh my God, it's so beautiful to see your face again. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my goodness, and this is a kind of webinar. Yeah. Hi. Uh, what did you say? What did you say? I said this is okay, your, this is your kind of webinar. And yes, it is. <laughs> How come you didn't prompt me earlier? Do you Christy, know? how are you? I was, I was so excited. Don't know how's it going to join. Oh, <laughs> so God. Excited. How did you tune it? <laughs> it's so sweet to hear your voice. I see. Like, I thought you heard me when I'm like, oh my God. I saw you and I just lead off. She was in my, <laughs> I was a facilitator for a school of profit. No school. way. So, Dr. Ramatu is my mentor, okay? You mentioned it? I, I mentioned it to you. <laughs> and you never told me. <laughs> and you know no, I told you. You just didn't, you didn't hear. Maybe you. Maybe you didn't hear what I said. Or your this is that kind of webinar, okay? Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> the life of my group, she just. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, but we had some serious people in that group. Um, Paris, I'm doing that. Even if we have just like two minutes more. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm I'm signaling them that Chris is dragging all of them back in now, so they're talking. Dr. Ramatu, <laughs> did you join late? Perez, did you join late? Toby, uh, Diambe, where are you from? That is some guy. Diambe Nyatwa, where are you from? Let me ask him to unmute. Okay. Good morning, P.U. Where, uh, where are you from? I'm from Tarabasa. Tarabasa State, that's good, that's good. All right. Lani, uh, this is a nice DP you have here. Uh, what were you laughing at there? Did you see cake or what? Modupe Lani, let me ask you to unmute. Dr. Ramitsu, are you there? Yeah, good to see you. Hello. Good to see you too. Yeah. Hope your year is off to a good start. Absolutely. Great things, great things, great things. I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah. What 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 Chrissy and Andrew are doing, they actually tease us. You know, you, this this is a whole day seminar that we're gonna try and cramp in one and a half hours. You know, there's not even enough time to do it. So whatever tools they're talking about is what I think we should be focusing on the tools because you won't have time to do them here if, if you hadn't uh, done them before. Now. And we've got the amazing Bookie just joining. No, Bookie, I've been here. I think she was in the yes. breakout room. Uh, okay, the, she's done from a breakout room. Bookie, how are you? Hi, morning to you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Hi, Bookie. Bookie, have you seen Chrissy? Your, your Chrissy. 
Yes, yeah. so uh-uh. Your and your up they have they have exploded though. Mm. Running things. Yeah, <laughs> they are running things, heavy things that they are running, two of them. I love it. I love it. We love you, Buki. Thank you, really. Nice to see you guys. Chrissy, you're muted. Hi, Buki. I just want oh my god, I feel like I'm not seeing her in like forever. Please, can you can we see your beautiful face? He gave us a Saturday morning look now. Don't be you'll, shy. You'll be such a honor. <laughs> a Saturday morning face. Oh, by yeah. the way, Chrissy, this is your 4 a.m. face is fine. This is how I woke up, I promise. I promise you this is how I woke up. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> you woke up and you just look like this, right? Honestly, <laughs> can you? I'm like, when I looked at the mirror, I'm like, ah, ah, God's goodness. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Oh my like, God, oh, look what you've done already. <laughs> okay, so good to see you. Oh, okay. You have to we have to unmute you again. Yeah. Yes. It's bookie. Okay, I'm hey, the, Chrissy, I'm I'm the is really hungry this year. Well, you. Wants to play. <laughs> so I'm oh, gonna wow. close all rooms now because our time is fast, man. Yeah, uh, I think you guys can get to the level that you Chrissy. So don't don't okay. try and rush it. Okay. You can really drill down into it. It's actually good for folks to know how to set up their lives in in a way that they can succeed. All right, Steve. Uh, I got into some rooms. Interesting conversations they were having. Really, really good. Dam la la la. Well, good to see you. I'm glad. You are making the sacrifice. Ask a question, Chinasa. Morning, P. Good morning, everyone. Quick morning. question. So is the vision statement, is that similar to a purpose statement? And the reason I ask this is because I'm currently going through P, the purpose bootcamp um, link that you shared. And so I'm just wondering, is that the same? Would that be the same thing? I imagine it is, but just wanted to clarify. Yes, um, yes, yeah, quite similar actually. It is the same thing, really. Vision statement, purpose, mission statement, it's just semantics. But yeah. Okay. So second second question. So the reason I ask is it's a, like a, a long pro not a long process, but it's a very intentional and thoughtful process to get to that statement with, you know, hearing from God, etc. You know, so it's not like some um nice wishful like yeah i want to just run the world type thing <laughs> absolutely absolutely um and that's why you know when we're talking about we talked about how you, it's um it's almost like the first part of your identity statement especially because in this mm -hmm. company i know that we are very conversant with with that your purpose statement your identity statement all of that are usually not far away from each other they're you know very close um but yes it's it's not um you don't you don't just jumble words together. You, it's okay. a lot of drilling and excavating. Awesome, thank you. All right, I think we have majority of the groups back. So, Chrissy and Hadera is back to you. Okay, thank you so much, HP. How was how was how were the rooms you were in? I I was actually only in one room. <laughs> oh, it was wow. excellent. <laughs> yes. You it was didn't excellent. spread your presence amongst everybody. Oh, I'm wow. I'm so sorry. You know, we see tech survey. I'm not. So I just stayed with the people I stayed with. But it was really good. So we went we went over each of the items that we agreed steps to improve going forward, you know, and stuff like that. So I think that that was really useful. How were your rooms? Your many I'm rooms? The <laughs> There's a fox here, um, HP. Pripri saying... She's got our friends, William and Fikayo, we should continue. So is there a place where we can encourage them, those who were in the same breakout rooms that they didn't finish, that they feel there was a connection in doing the things they were doing, they should form their own little group somewhere and just keep going at it? Absolutely. That's part of our... Okay, go on, Chrissy. Oh, no, HP. <laughs> I was no, just no, going to no, you go on, you go on, you I was go just on. Going to say that you know this Zoom time, this P two P wasn't just because we're trying to just get people to talk. The intention behind it is that people start to make connections yeah. from conversations and can be accountability buddies for the year. 
so that's the end goal of this so yes that's definitely what we what we had in, in what we what we had in what, what the intention for this was so yes pre pre and fikayo and um winnie please you've got okay. yourself accountability bodies for the year <laughs> Yeah, so we exactly. have it further down in the slides that you can feel free to exchange numbers and actually continue to do this because when you're done with your vision boards, I'm, I'm happy. Um, Derry says Han and Abby exchange contacts. So actually, when you're done with your vision boards and you've gone through this process with somebody, what makes sense is over the course of the year, in about two, three months, in one month, somebody should reach out to the other person and say, oh, have you started that course? Or oh, by the way, that course you started, did you finish it? What's going on there? Okay, oh, you know, I, you said you wanted to lose weight. Oh, we're seeing these Instagram pictures of ice cream. <laughs> What's going on there, right? And when you have an accountability body, part of what you do is that you allow, you give the person full permission to speak into your life. Of course, we have a culture of honor, meaning that even when we're correcting or, you know, reguiding and redirecting, we do it honorably but you give the person permission to say to hold you accountable and that's what accountability is you said you will do this how you're living or what you're doing is not in accordance with what you said because it's you that chose the goal can you adjust yeah that's it yeah yeah and shabby had a question actually it's been addressed that's exactly what happened you know we didn't have enough time and there and i just thought you know let's exchange numbers and pair up you know, yes, and all of that. So it's amazing. Um, and I think that's the, you know, that's that's like, you know, leveraging on this. So thank you all. Thank you so very much. Love yeah. it. Love it so much. Thank you. Um, so we're just gonna go on. Um, so here it's a it's a little exercise. Everybody, what do you see? Literally. And please, I, I want like I want everybody to put something in the chat box. You cannot not type something. What do you see on here on the screen? Numbers, what numbers do you see? Type it out. Be truthful to yourself or don't copy somebody's own. Love to see it. <laughs> make sure, make sure, no, if you go and copy and paste somebody else, uh -uh, there is numbers that are the longest. <laughs> Love it, love it. Bring it in. I need you to actually engage with this particular exercise. Go for it, go for it. Dami says she loves optical illusions. They're they are my favorite, but let's not talk about them right now. Dami Lola. Everybody go for it. Let's do Mr. it. I'm moving, we are on the same block and KG. <laughs> And okay. Kelly Rowans. I promise I'm no word. <laughs> um, turns out Dami is in the same state I am in right now. I'm going to make sure I see her before I leave. Yeah, Dami Lola is, uh, I think, just a bit east of you, uh, Chrissy. No, so I'm in Michigan as well. So she's in Michigan. Yeah, so Dami is, yeah, I just told her. Okay. Okay, so we're, if you have not typed, you're wrong. And we are rounding this up in five seconds in five, four, three, two. <laughs> it's a lot since there's a nine at the end. It's a lot of type of the phone number. <laughs> okay, so um, here's the essence of this exercise, right? Some people do so best, many man. things. The number is eight four five two eight three nine, right? Be eight. It's three. It's eight. Oh man! <laughs> it says, oh man! It's okay. Hey, you, hey, you something is old age. <laughs> <laughs> I can have sworn that was three. So, so <laughs> um, so here's what it is, right? Um. And this is how Sorry, Chrissy, can I just say something before you sure. finish the before you say this? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point out Chrissy is going to give you all the intellectual and the proper explanation of this, of, of, of this illusion that you just saw. But you guys know 
that part of what happened was that you saw something and you focused on the numbers. Meaning that if I tell you now, sorry, my daughter is coming one minute. What's happening? <laughs> Take my dress out of there. Okay, please tell her I said she could please allow you. You hear? Hello, my steps. Okay, go and take it. Thank you. So if I say you guys should, in my background, look at and see anything that is gold. If, can you guys see anything that's gold in my background? A mirror frame. Beautiful. If I now say, can you identify something red or pink in my background? Right? Your, your eye starts to look for something red or pink in the background. Part of what I'm trying to point out to you is that you're used to looking for a particular thing in something. When we saw this, Im when I saw this image, I saw the numbers, but I see a circle. I see the lines. I see a pattern. It looks like an optical illusion, but it also looks like the, you know, like when they want to hypnotize you, those things that turn around, those hypnotic circles. Meaning that when you look at life a lot of the time, you're looking at it from a bias. Mm -hmm. And it's usually what we call a confirmation bias. In your mind, though there's a, a gray square, there's a black circle, the black circle is made of lines. Everybody wrote numbers that they saw, but that was mm -hmm. not all there was to see. So where in life, well done, thank Adisola. So where in life do you come at life looking at only what you expect to see? And so where, what are you missing because of that point of view? I want you to hold that in your hands this year to say, could I be seeing more? Is there more to this conversation? When something is happening to me in, you know, in my life, yes. If something is happening in my life, are there more perspectives to it, right? So I want you to think about that. But Chrissy, shoot. That's beautiful. Thank you, P. Um, thank you, um, HB. I just went to school. <laughs> and I've graduated. Thank you so much. But um, in addition to what HB has said, what 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 um and you know, this this is the power of perspective when you are considering visioning or vision boarding, um, what really affects what you see or what you consider when you're seeing or when you're visioning or areas of improvement from the previous year. So which is why we had a wheel of life and your reflection guide, because all of those things, if you read the reflection guide, one of the things that I put there is that when you reflect the when you reflect about the past year, it's a launch pad for what the next year is going to be. So it's a very important exercise that you have to do. Some people even go as far back as doing it month in, month out, like month on month, quarter on quarter, you know, like, because the closer you are to that, the le the more aware you are of all of these different, you know, curves of life, the more you can address the one to come, right? Um. So when when you're visioning, here are things to consider, areas of improvement, because some people don't know what you even put on a vision board. So this is me telling you, areas of improvement from your wheel of life. What was your score? What did you have? In what area was the lowest? You know, when you think about the area that was the lowest, how does it tie into your bigger vision? The first that you wrote about your life vision or your life mission. Um, some people have God-inspired visions. This is a very prophetic community. So I can say this very clearly. Some of you, God literally comes in your dream and say, knock, 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 okay, me. this year, this is what you are doing. This year, I want you to do one, two, three for me, you know, and even if you were not thinking about it before, you have to just align in that moment. And then some of us have like long-term goals that we've been working on for a while. And each year you have to work on different facets of that long-term goal. Um, you know, here I am compelled to talk about some of us, well, the last time I was in teaching moments, I remember talking about cycles of life. And I remember saying for those of us that were there that for me personally, I have realized that my work, my life works in four years of a, like in a cycle. Every cycle is four years, which is, you know, almost similar to what HP was saying about patterns and just, you know, all of that. I realized that every four years is almost like a reset. Um, reset from whatever level it was I was in the previous four years and then we just go from there so um, I know that every four years has a theme within the theme of my life 
And so every year within that four year cycle has a theme that is sort of, you know, it's in layers. You always have to work it back. So sometimes you want to think about that. Then another thing to consider when visioning is your knowledge or your exposure to what is possible. Because sometimes our visions are limited or inhibited by our knowledge of what we know is possible. If we knew that certain things were possible, maybe we would dream bigger, you know. And, you know, I feel like that starts to tell you that um visioning don't limit you to um don't limit it to your to what you can conceive of your mind alone even if your mind is powerful the knowledge base with which your mind works with how robust is it you know um the people that you're talking to your psych your circle rather and just what you're exposed to how rich is it because those things affect the quality of your vision and so as we sort of progress, I want us to start to um, think about that. And this is not, it's not that once you've done this visioning today, that's the end of it. I have been visioning for 2023 since December and it's going to continue to the end of January. You know, like I take my time and you should take your time too. No pressure. You have the rest of January and even to be honest, almost like the rest of the year to keep um, just making sure that everything is aligned and you're doing the right thing and all of that. So it's not um it's not just for you to cut this picture off of, uh, take this picture off of the internet and just slap it on your vision. But no, it is is beyond just putting the pictures. The real work happens in the mind. Okay. Um then HP is going to talk us through anchor goals. So all of these things we've been talking about um, up until now, there are elements of things that would go into your vision board. So I would want to implore us to just, you know, take note of them. And you, there are pieces, you will soon see how the puzzle comes together. Um, HB, over to you, ma'am. Awesome, Chrissy, awesome. So we wanted to talk about anchor goals just because you know, in a new year, we're all setting our different goals. James, thank you. We're all setting our different goals, right? And part of what I try to do, in spite of how, you know, the year has gone or the year before it has gone, is actually to look at all those core areas of my life, my health. So what goals am I setting concerning that? If it's good, what do I want to continue to do? What do I want to make a lifestyle? my relationships, what do I want to do more of? Do I want to reach out more? Do I actually want to send more text messages? Do I want to connect more? Do I want to say, come over for drinks more? What is it that I'm doing, right? So in all the areas that are good, you still set goals for how to improve them and how to maintain the goodness because you know everything that is good requires work to keep it good. And then what we also advise is that the areas that are, you know, that you're not naturally great at, so let's say in my case, I'm, I'm using me as the example here, if I'm saying I want to work on my health and that's not, not something that I've necessarily paid attention to, some of the things that you would then think of is in the areas that I do well, what do I do? What makes me, what makes me do it well, right? And then apply the same set of skills that you used to do well in those areas to the areas you don't do well. I don't know if that's clear. You know how, a lot of the time we measure when we don't succeed. We measure what we're not succeeding at. We say, oh, I didn't do well here. But a lot, one, one of the things we don't do is we don't go to where did I do well and what skills did I, I, did I apply to do well here? When you identify those, then you use it in the areas you didn't do well. However, your anchor goals, right, are the goals that let's say you have 10 goals for the year. So I have my list of goals for the year with me here. I wrote them down, you know, I, I, when it was my new year, I wrote down the goals, right? But when it comes to what your anchor goals are, you've written 10 goals, that th 10 things you'd like to do this year. Some of my own things are things that are fun, that are personal development related. I used to speak French quite well, I don't speak it well anymore. I want to go back to French school. I used to speak Arabic well. I don't speak Arabic very well anymore because I don't have anyone to speak it to. So I'm going back to Arabic school. 
I want to learn how to ride a bike. Just, you know, so it's not every goal that is a, you know, like, oh, it's a major, you know, it has to be like, you know, spirit gym gym goal. No, the goals can be on, on every area of your life, right? But there is one goal of all my goals that if I achieved, exactly, there's one goal that of all my goals that if I achieved this particular goal, my year, I would be able to look back and say my year was a successful year. So if I don't learn how to ride a bike, it's neither here nor there. The only reason why the riding a bike came up for me this year was that last year I went for a retreat in Maldives. You know, Maldives is made up of a thousand islands. Exactly. Swimming for some. Maldives is made up of a thousand islands and the islands have their natural shapes, right? So um, the resorts on the islands build according to the shape of the island. So th this resort I went to had, you know, an hour. It, you could walk from end to end within an hour. And I went with, you know, like an Oibo crew. So everywhere we got to, they just got on the bikes and they drove, they rode to the other end. Meanwhile, I'll be like, oh, I'm exercising. So I'll be following them at the back. So I'm like, since me, I want to add more Maldives type retreats to my life, right? Let me learn to ride a bike. So but if that doesn't happen, it is neither here nor there, really, right? I could work, walk, I could choose. That's not something I want to do. I could choose. So that's not an anchor goal. So when, when you're thinking about your anchor goals, I want you to think about what one thing, I'm joining the swimming club, please. What one thing, if you did this year, when you look back, will you say this was a successful year? Choose one or two things, and I want you to write them down now. If you if you if you're able to write them down in the chat, please write it down. Swimming is good, but except your job is swimming related, swimming will not be your anchor goal. So help us think now as to what is the one thing that if you achieved this year, you would feel like your life this year was very successful for you. Think about it. One, two things. Beautiful, lovely. I love that. DMB, make 20, plenty money is not a goal at all. Make pay debts, pay off debts is good. Make plenty money is not a goal. A good goal is to say, make. So let me tell you guys a secret. Oh, it's been recorded. But one of my goals this year was to make 200,000 naira every day. And one of the reasons why I wanted to make that was I felt like, okay, it should just be a good amount of money, right? But you know, one of the things about setting goals and of being Christians is that when you now say, um, you, you then set your goals and you say to Father, you say, um, God, DMB, that's a beautiful goal, but it's too low. You say, God, I, I, this is what I want, but I want you to give me better than I can think or imagine. So let me tell you a story. Yesterday morning, two, two or three days ago, I told Ujumwa, who is on this call, that's my goal. Then yesterday morning, she mistakenly sent money to my house. I told her it, was a, it wasn't that amount. I now told her that, ah, this is how money would just be coming to me. Then I went for a meeting somewhere and I got given a check. It was just somebody saying, thank you for impacting my life. Of the amount that I said I wanted to make per day, I, he gave me a check of that before 10 a.m. Then I realized that the day before I had gotten paid that amount as well, this amount that I've told God that I want to make daily. So this morning when I was brushing, I was like, Lord, I don't want to make um 200,000 a day anymore can we just make it one million a day because if you can do this one so easily <laughs> why did I choose so small do you understand so I want you to realize that God is God and he's here he says better than you can think or imagine meaning that when you think you're just giving him ingredients do you understand he's like give me thoughts give me imagination expand your mind and then watch me blow it because I will give you exceeding abundantly so when Chrissy says, don't think small, don't think small. You're not dealing with yourself. You're giving yourself the thought itself. Ujuma, I was actually going to send you a message yesterday to say, oh, um, I got this money, but I didn't want you to say, I should come and do um, airway here. So that's why I didn't send you the message, but now everybody knows. So <laughs> choose, choose to anchor goals for yourself that, you know, if, if I were to achieve this, for some people, it might be a health, Thing. It might be that this year, if you are suffering from, you know, an autoimmune disorder, for example, right, and you know that a lot of those things medically they've been found out to to be related to, you know, anger, trauma, keeping malice, you know, having had a tough childhood. Do you want to say this year I'm going to 
work on this and reverse this situation. That's number one. Then when you now say that, you then have to say, what is the how of it? It's not how I will achieve it. But am I then going to eat clean? Am I going to see a therapist so I can, you know, help process this? Do you understand? You have you have your, you, you set your goal, your two anchor goals, and then you, you state what you need to do. Because let's, let me tell you the secret to achieving every goal. The secret is determining who you have to become to achieve the goal. So if I say I want to lose 10, 10 pounds, not 10 pounds, 10 kg this year, if that is a goal, the people who lose 10 kg and keep it up, what do they do? They exercise, they eat well, they're disciplined, they know when to stop eating, they choose what to eat. So there's a behavior of the person who achieves the goal that you're looking for, right? So what behaviors, who do you become to be able to achieve those goals? I want you to think about that. <laughs> I'm getting you excited, Chrissy. We've been doing this, I'm surprised you're excited. <laughs> Okay, so please write your goals. Chrissy is going to time us. Give us two minutes now to, to just put your goals in the chat. Um, and then we move. Yes, yeah. so anchor right. goals in the chat. And well done. I'm seeing really interesting goals. Sorry, I, I think AU was about to speak. Please go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, do you want to talk about smart goals by any chance? You know, so they, they just learn it from here. Yes, Chrissy will talk about the smart goals towards the end. Um, before they become smart, we, we just want to give you the ability to, you know, think big and think about the life changing goals before we then make them smarter. But thank you for that. And I see Chinasa has her hands raised up. Um, Chinasa, do you want to ask a question? Yes, please. And I, and the reason I raised my hand back up was because of what P just mentioned. So I was going to ask, um, what's the difference between your goal and your objective? So my understanding is your goal is that broad, um, it's sort of broader. And then the objectives are the ones that you make smart, more specific and measurable. So when you say goal, for me, for instance, I'm like, okay, financial independence. And then I go into the specifics and I can say, I want to Oh, what happened? I think she dropped off as so. No, uh, maybe call him in. Okay. Right. She knows how you may ask her to unmute. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. a call was coming through my phone. I don't know if you heard most of what I said. There was a call coming, so I was trying to stop it. We stopped yeah. hearing about when you said financial independence. Yes. Yeah, so for me, like, for instance, the goal I sort of set is financial independence, right? And then I would set specific objectives. So where you say, oh, I want um, a certain amount by what period and um, how is what I would put as my objective. I don't know if I'm confusing things or if it's just language. Should I, should I go for it, HP? So, so um, almost similar to Mervyn's question, right? Um, financial independence is, is, okay, the two minutes is over. If you have not put your, your, your uncle go, yeah, you're wrong, go. So um, when you say financial independence, it's, it's a big bucket, right? So the question is, is 2023 the year that you want to achieve financial independence? If yes, that is, that is a 2023 um, vision, right? And, you know, we're going to get to it at the end of this because we are, we're taking it in bits so that those who are not familiar with this are not overwhelmed, right? So when, if financial, in, if this is the year that you want to achieve financial independence, that becomes a 2023 vision. And when you talk about goals, objectives and all of that, that then comes to like goal setting and tracking, you know, because th then that ties to what HP was saying, where you begin to break it down. What do I need to do to achieve financial independence? Do I need to change jobs? Do I need to have another business? Do I need to um, expand my business? You know, all of those objectives starts to, and those are the ones, those are the ones that you need to make smart, right? But the overall vision in itself is the one that has to be big enough but big enough for you to be able to achieve it and the way to achieve it is to break it down into you know um maybe 
in Q1 this is what I'm going to do. Literally, there's all templates in what is going to happen in Q1, in Q2. Is it every month? Is it every two weeks? You know, all that breaking down then happens. And then you make those really smart because that's how you track it. And there are different ways of breaking that down. Some people will use the 4DX measure, which is the lead and lag measures. I don't know. I, I mean, that's like that. You, there are so many ways around it, to be honest. But um, I hope that answers your question, Chinasta, and sort of Mervyn. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Good response. Thank you. Um. So we just we uh we what needs to end at eleven thirty, but it looks as if you guys still have a lot of material to cover. So let's um let's honor people's time. See if we can be done by in the next fifteen minutes or so. Mm. Yes, we'll try. <laughs> Um, hey, you asked for 10 to 12, but we'll try. Oh, you were you were targeting 12? Yes, that's what we asked for. We asked for two hours. All right. so we'll, we'll, we'll try as much as possible to get off before 12. Though. All right, that's fine. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Okay. Um, so when you've identified what your ankle goal is and uh, or ankle goals are one or two, um, then you start to sort of um, talk, think, and mull over what the theme of your year for of your of the year is for you. And this can be they, there's so many ways to get to what the theme of your year is. Um, I'm going to share mine quickly, and if you the way that I've helped a few people get the theme of the years, and HP is going to also share hers as well, just so that we get like different perspectives to it. For me personally, my theme of year, I usually feel it. And I don't know how to explain that. Um, I feel my year before it even starts. So um, for instance, 2023, I started feeling 2023 exactly on the 1st of December. Um, I just feel it. Um, and I feel like that's because I'm a feeler as a person. I, I tend to feel things a lot. That's a natural disposition, right? So I can, because I, I also visualize, I, I envision, first, it's just my day to day. I can sit in a place and I'm like, what's 2023 going to be like? And thankfully, this is the spiritual environment. So you guys can understand from that perspective. I just sit down and it starts to come to me. I just feel it. So I have a sense what's going to be. Um, for, for some people that I've, that I've worked with, it is a it's a case of oh um this is what my year felt like I didn't like it the previous year this is what some people literally just set that intention this is what I want this next year to be and everything I'm going to do I'm going to work towards that um some people will just say um this area of my life is so low and because it's so low I'm going to focus that becomes the anchor goal for the next year and because it's the anchor goal everything they want to feel within that area of their life becomes the theme of the year and the reason this is important is because um because we are so powerful as human beings you you know that ability to create you know that thing when God says you are God is not actually just a statement. It's so, so powerful. And that's why visioning is also as powerful. Because the moment you set your mind to say, this is how my year we feel, almost like everything starts to fall in place to make that happen. Even when there are situations that are not in line with that feel, all you need to do is literally go back to the place of acceptance of what you said your year we feel and things start to fall in place. So it's important that we generally have a theme of what the year will be. Last year, my theme was rest. It was, and I would say it was the most restful year that I've had so far in my life. Even if there were a lot of things that happened, but it was from a place of rest. There was no stress. It was just restful, right? Um, HP, I'll allow you to jump in here too share your perspective. Thank you, thank you so much. And I think that, that was so beautiful. Yes, um, I agree with the feelings and all of that. But one of the things that I want us to be mindful of, especially when we're a Christian community, is to be mindful to, you know, also be practical, right? Chrissy is a feeler. We have a lot of feelers, so they feel it. Some of you are not necessarily feelers. So I don't want you leaving here thinking, oh, because I don't feel, then I don't know what my theme is. I have to go and look for the pastor that says, aspire to perspire, according to one of my friends. <laughs> I choose that as the theme of the year. No, 
some of the things that you can choose to apply is actually to look at the areas that you're looking to develop. So I remember I used to theme my years on my birthdays, actually. So I used to then sit down and say, I did this. So maybe I did, um, it says my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me? Can you hear me good? Okay, so let's, beautiful. So let's say um, I was great at work this year, right? I was great at work last in, in 2022 or in 2020. I was great at work. However, I found out that my personal relationship suffered a lot in that year. This is just by way of example. And so in the next year, I can say this year, I want to work on XXX. So some of the themes that I have given my years over time is like I said earlier, there was a year that I said, I think of my, when I turned 33, I said in my 33rd year, she in her 33rd year, she was beautiful. And I worked on things like my well-being. I worked on things like exercise. I worked on things like ensuring that I was curating a wardrobe. In another year, I said in another in, in another year, let's say my 34th Mommy, year, I said in that year she was intentional. Mommy, so whether it was about relationships, Mommy, whether you know, choose a theme that actually improves you. Because let me just point out that we're spiritual beings on this journey but you're also living and having a human existence, right? So you need to be able to go back and look at some of the feedback. What, what did life tell you last year? Did you lose your friendships? At the beginning of every year, are you making a new set of friends because you haven't been able to maintain friendships over time? Then you want to look at maybe that scripture that says, if, if, to, to have friends, you have to show yourself friendly. So maybe this year you can say, this year I'm friendly. And so what does friendly mean for me? Do you understand? So pick a theme that actually improves your life generally, right? Pick a theme that improves your life, a spiritual theme, whatever theme, your entire life is a life, make it worthwhile and choose themes. Remember that you're continually on a journey. So choose themes that take you where you want to go. Awesome, that's it for me, Chrissy. Thank you. So quickly, we'll move to the visioning exercise. I feel like we've given everyone like tools to say this and this and that. And we're going to do that in like 10, in like 10 minutes, about 10 to 12 minutes so that we'll finish by 10, 50, 10, 49, and we can wrap up because this is literally almost 11, um, 49, Nigeria yeah. time. <laughs> my, my bad. <laughs> 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 so um at this point this is the point where you pull out your blank powerpoint for some of you who still have a blank or some people have started throwing things in there already or you can go on canva and pick out like a vision board um template and just start plugging it um hp is going to walk us through um just how to start thinking about it um what you need to be doing i'm going to just play some soaking music to help us sort of get in the mood in a way and and then we'll just take it from there hp do you want to okay just to be sure that we're we're effective at this can you show me can you show us by show of hands you know raising your digital hands if you're actually in a position to do your vision board now are you in a position to get on canva or powerpoint and start to pull in your pictures show us by show of hands we have three participants four I'm just going to be looking at the numbers because if we're not going to be able to do it properly, then I think we've given you enough information for you to go and do it by yourself if you won't do it on the call. But I don't want us to, to keep you if you're not doing the work. We have 17 hands out of 95. Seventeen hands out of ninety-five. We have two hands in the chat. I don't know. Um, I don't know if that counts. So twenty hands. Twenty hands, meaning there's seventy-four people who won't be able to fill out their vision boards now. Mm -hmm. So Chrissy, how about we talk them? through it and then let them share it back with us or share it on whatever platforms with their accountability partners. So we're not keeping you all doing something that's ineffective, yeah. right? 
I agree. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're just going to talk you through that. And this is part of accountability, right? Part of accountability means if if it has been sent and it's not done, you know, if the work, um, if we can't do the work, it was a prerequisite to doing this, then that's fine. But it means we won't use everybody's time to do it. So, yes, yeah, so Lua Tevi, but we only have 20 people who can. That's the problem. So if you've cho if you've not chosen an accountability partner, choose one now. Choose people in your group, exchange phone numbers, you know, so that we can, you, you can actually achieve the full, you know, benefit of this, right? So you can achieve the full benefit of creating a vision board. So let's 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 talk about it, right? Chrissy, could mm -hmm. you just talk them through it and then I will speak to it. Right. So um what I have on the screen is just what it's just um what your vision board could look like um some people will use scrapbooks you know it could it could be anything there's so many templates out there that you can just fix photos in so um what your vision board is meant to be is supposed to be like a place where you put some tangibility to your imaginations or your or your just your thoughts what you what you are able to see with your eyes after all of these conversations about what the theme of your year is what um what your uncle goals are what your life mission is your wheel of life's cause your reflections and everything you've done in the past year you know if you could just like if you could just sit still for a minute or two or even much more depending on how comfortable you are actually you know alone and in your own thoughts and you know with your own mind wondering um what will 2023 look like can you take it can you just sit down relax and just peep into the year can you see you know are you able to open your inner eyes and you know use your imaginations that god has given you use your creativity to just see what this year could be um like we had said before what are you going to do this year that is going to get you a step or two steps or even 10 steps if possible closer to your life mission do you see um what are the things you need to do there are so many things that hp and i have said and everybody has said even on the charts do you also need to be riding bicycles why is it important to you um are you going to be going to maldives a lot as well do you want to are you are you do you have like a huge chunk of wonder lost and you want to travel and because of that you want to be able to know some languages ahead of time you see how they connect so you just don't slap it on there because um they say that arabic is the next big language no it has to be tight because the moment is not tied to something that you're passionate about. That is one of the biggest reasons why people end the year and they're like, I have not done anything on my vision board because it was not your vision in the first place. It was somebody else's vision. You just saw it on somewhere or anywhere and then you, it felt cool. It's not enough for it to be cool. How does it tie into what you want to do with yourself? Uh, there are some random things that we have put, not random actually, there are some, you know, prompts that we've put on here are there specific people that god it may not even be god just people that you think are doing well in a particular area of your career and you want them to come on board you know in your life you want to work with them you know are you taking on leadership um roles in your office and you want a personal board of directors and so you want to start sourcing those people are there people that you know you've been attracted to you felt drawn to prior to now that you think you know this this person is where I think I want to be and so I want them on my personal board of directors as a professional or as a business person you know so those are the things that you need to be putting on here if somebody said their uncle goal was to make three thousand pounds a month or something um you know put it on here three thousand pounds a month for this business um are there conferences that you want to go this year because they enrich you put it on there put it on there start to put it like just start populating it and no it doesn't have to be 25 or 10 or 15 um visions it could be just five it could be just three it could be just four another thing you want to do is that you want to do less to do better that's very very important you want to you know is a it's um it's a philosophy of essentialism you just want to make sure that what you are doing is what is important is as opposed to um you know just 
jumping and dropping things on here. Um, so that's what your vision board should look like. Where you have my 2023 vision board could be where you put your theme. It could be, somebody said their theme is rest. It could be 23, year of rest. 2023, my year of balance. Somebody also said um, joy and laughter. Somebody said celebrations. So you start to, you know, put it on there. If you want a house, you want to put that dream house there. If you have a particular house that you actually want, you can actually just put it on there. If it's in a particular location, put it on there, you know. Um, so this is how you just start to populate it. Some people have like affirmations or certain thoughts or guidelines or taglines that God is giving you or that you just want to rule your 2023, put it on there, you know, and that's how you sort of start to populate it. HP. Can I share my screen? Yes. Just so. share for a minute. I think I have my vision board somewhere here. 2022's vision board. So this is just to share quickly. And then um, can you see? Are you seeing my vision board for 2022? Yeah, okay, now it's, it's shared. Beautiful. So, okay, I can't find the complete one, but I'm just going to walk you through it so that you can think about it, okay. right? So last year I wanted to host my first retreat in Maldives or no, yeah, my first retreat that was going to take place in Maldives. So I have the Maldives there, right? One of the things about your vision board, you know, one of the things about what you see where the Lord said to Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, we also remember that we don't see everything perfectly, right? But you see. So I didn't end up hosting a personal retreat in Maldives, but I went to, ended up going for a retreat in Maldives because I had chosen Maldives. So I started to follow a hotel. Things happened and it was one of the best things that happened to me last year. I had real estate as part of my vision for the last year. And so it was on my board, buying real estate, developing real estate. I wanted to do NFTs, cryptos and NFTs. And for me, one of the ways that that came up was if you remember Tommy Arayami's um, prophecy for the year from 2021 into 2022, he said, look at alternative currencies. And somehow even in our community, there was this lady who now started to dream about crypto and all of that. Now, not all of that has worked, but it was something that I chose to look at. And NFTs, digital art, scribble something, sell it online, create property and wealth for yourself. I decided I wanted the equivalent in my mind of a matte green G wagon with quilted leather seats. I wanted the equivalent. I didn't want the car, actually, because I feel like, you know, it depends on who you are, but I felt like I want to have the money to do it without necessarily doing it because it's not everything you want to show, you know, even if you have the ability, but I wanted it. I wanted it in my consciousness. So part of what I did was I knew how much it cost. I looked for it. I saw where did they sell it so that you have an idea. But 2022, the core of my year was that it was my year of exponential growth. Now on my final vision board statement where I have this couple smiling and looking at each other, I said I wanted a loving respectful, kind relationship. And a lot of that had to start from me, giving love, respect, kindness in my marriage, in my relationship. So where do you need to change? This, the last photo here where you see hands raised up is like a Tony Robbins conference, I coach. So I wanted to be able to coach on a large scale, right? And so it was on my vision board. Green is my favorite color. You can see a lot of green. So this quilted green Chanel bag has been on my vision board for years. I don't necessarily intend to buy it. Same thing about not wanting to spend the money, but having the ability to do it because prudence and stewardship are really important as we vision. Stewardship is really important. We hold wealth for God. So it's not saying don't have good things, but just steward well, have a balance. And then for me, the word for me, when I had put all of these things that seemed grand was God, in the, God is in the midst of her. She cannot fail. So when we talk about our vision and, mission, uh, and our mission, life statements, my vision or my mission statement for Hajara's life is to know God and to make God known. So in everything I'm doing, that is what guides me. And so because of that, because God is in the midst of me, then I can't fail. So I encourage us all as we um, start to close to create your vision boards in a way that energizes you. Create your vision, especially when you make, you know, put it down for the year. Does this give me energy? Does this give me power? 
Does this make me want to do it? Does this allow me to push? And then go ahead and do it. And then add the prayer, add the advantage that we have of the Holy Spirit better than we can think or imagine to what you envision. Yes, Chrissy. Thank you. Um, so we've already um, addressed the accountability. So this is the point, if you haven't done it up until now, this is the point where you hit up somebody right now, slid into their DMs and slide into their DMs rather, slide into their DMs and, you know, let them know that you want them to be the accountability buddy or you just want them to, you know, have a chat, go and woo them like Yo-Yo says, go and toast them and, you know, let them be accountability partners. And it can even develop into what I call a mastermind group where you literally just have like set meet, set time that you meet in the week or in the month and you are just like, where are you on this matter? What is going on here? Are you okay? And this is the community of the Holy Spirit in the places and times when you need to hold hands and scrabble shit out, you know, like ascend and kill it out. You do it right on spots. You know what I mean? So you want to take the advantage now. You want to do it now. This you're, We're so blessed to have a community like this where you know that everybody is, lead, is following God's leading. So we are, we are getting the best of our expertise and the best of God all together. Um, so next steps, um, like I said before, there, you, you want to break down this 2023 vision into milestones. What will be your milestone? How do you want to spread it across in 2023? Um, do you want to spread it in quarters, in months? Um, do you want, you know, you also want to do, like, it's not, again, it's not wishful thinking, you know, as I think we have tried to make clear on this call, is active work mental active work even with your mind as well you're also working towards it and i trust god the, the, the way it works it beckons at you it shows you flashes things popping one information will just come you just something on linkedin somebody will just measure something as you're walking around somewhere because your mind is already there because you have already envisioned it it's easy for you to pick it out have you ever noticed when you notice a particular car on the street all of a sudden you start seeing that car everywhere when you step out that's the power of the mind that's the power of envision the moment your mind notices it can see it it's all over you know um so with that being said this is the end of our of the session i hope come that you on see. come oh. on this is the version of what you ordered versus what you got pu you want to unmute because i know you have a meeting in eight minutes pu let's hear you okay 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 you change your device let me make this closed uh P, you can unmute now yeah thanks a lot i'm jara and chrissy you guys have uh, you guys have opened up a lot you know and i want to encourage you guys here I was just thinking, really, if you have a business and you want them to do this for your business, just sign them up. You have to pay for it, though. Um, they'll charge for businesses. You know, they're just doing this for us because it's a community of like-minded people. But I'm sure they can tailor this or make a bespoke um, pack for your company working with you. Um, and then you get your employees all aligned around the vision and the mission as well. And all of you are traveling in the same direction. You know, so think about what can be done, what can be achieved at the end of the year, not just from a personal standpoint, but from your company as well. For those of you who own companies or one-man businesses and all, think about how you can incorporate all of this and just do well with it and just leap, you know. One last thing though, you know, as, as you build your 2023 goals, your objectives, your targets and all, be mindful that life is a journey, you know. Don't want to try and accomplish everything in one year, okay? Space out what your target should. Just make sure it's reasonable, you know. You are not, uh, you are not um, uh, front-loading all your activities into 2023, hoping that you build a house, you buy that Mercedes, you go to Maldives, you have the best friends, you know, you learn driving, you learn how to ride a bike all in one day. You know, it's going to be really, really um, tight and, and exhausting as well. So make it as reasonable as possible, you know. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for so much, P.U. And that was, I mean, that was very good. Okay, so if, if you came early. <laughs> Hello, Bumi. Pastor Ebo. <laughs> you
If you came very early, I promised that I was going to share something. Let me quickly share it because I felt like what PU shared just like triggered. Okay, no, before I say that, because of what Chrissy has on the screen, let me say this. So Chrissy and HP actually does this professionally. Chrissy, I don't know if she still has 10 slots, but earlier in the week, she had 10 slots for people that wanted to do a one-on-one. -on -one. You can slide into a DM or follow her. And HP has this massive thing that she does for people for visioning. Please um make use of um take use of the advantage. I personally went to meet both of them because I can harass them, right? To say, do this for us. So this is like thousand of dollars worth. And I just want to thank you. And I just wanted to share this and then we'll come back to question and answers and comments. Okay. So I promised I was going to share this. I hope that I figure out how to share easily. And I'm I'm sharing this also because I heard what PU just said now. So in I think it was 2020. I had this, just look at this particular one. I hope I can annotate. If I can't, just look at where my the socks, where the legs are, right? I had it since 2020 in my vision board. This is my vision board for 2022. This was last year, okay? And some of you that know me a bit can just see where I'm coming from. <laughs> so I had this socks thing. And it never happened in 2019. It never happened in 2020. And you don't wear socks like this in Ibadan, wear that, right? You know, it just never happened. And then last year, I was taking a random picture and I did not even plan to take this picture. Don't mind, if I is not here, it was supposed to be four, right? It was not going to. And it was after I took this picture that I realized that this had been in my vision board and I kept carrying it over. Like PU said, it doesn't have to be like in one year, right? You know, so uh, pressure is a, is a killer of dreams. If it doesn't happen now, no, you are the one scoring yourself. It will happen again for some of them. I just wanted to say, but the power of envisioning things, the power of saying things, the intentionality, God honors that. And one of the things that he has told me this year is that I, I will see the fidelity of God. The fact that God is actually a faithful lover. If you dream with him, if he pours a seed into you, you are like stirring up his fidelity, that kind of like, that kind of thing, the fidelity of God. And you also say, so people that usually vision and they have it happen for them, it's not because they are smarter. It's because they have decided to partner with someone that pours a seed into them and carry it into terms. It's like a partnership. Trust me, I'm not like always the smartest in the room or something, but when I found out that they say, if you dream with this God, it will happen. What's my job? I see his fidelity. I go for it. I'm like, if it, yes, this. if anybody wants to steal that, it's my year of the fidelity of God. I am anchoring my life this year on the fact that I know that he's a faithful partner and is that kind of person. Anyway, so I will stop. Thank you very much, Chrissy. Let me add to Spotlight. Thank you very much, um, HP. Um, this has been really, really good. If not, I don't want to do one more WhatsApp group. I would have done a WhatsApp group for, for the weekend for people that want to ask questions, but God knows that if I do one more WhatsApp group, my phone will blow <laughs> this year. Thank you so much. Now is the time to ask questions, comments. We just have two minutes and we'll round it all up. The recording will be made available. Okay, Ijoma, I see your hand, so I'm calling you up. You're a fast one. The recording will be made available on the YouTube page. I've shared it. Um, okay. Yeah. So, Ijeoma, I'm asking you to unmute. Please go for it. Okay. Um, good morning. Just a quick one. Um, a vision board just for the things that you can control or what I mean, like something that you, your input is needed in the sense, for instance, straight to the point, if you are believing for healing, is that something you can put um, on the vision board? That's the question I want to ask. Yeah, um, do you both want to go for it? HP. Okay. Um, yes, like absolutely. Again, let's mm -hmm. not forget that this is not this is not just about us. This is also about the fact that we have a God who is bigger than us that is backing us up. I think that's our greatest advantage as believers, right? So if you believe in God for healing, put it on there. There are probably say, I don't, you know, 
there are different kinds of healing that we could be believing God for. And I imagine that there are certain things that you, certain steps that you can also take as a person. But if it's what you want God to do for you, put it on there. You see, Pastor Evan shared a video a few days ago or a few weeks ago, and I don't know if we all listened to it. And I'm so grateful to you, doc, Dr. Babajide, for making sure that I watch that video because she's like, this looks like your language. You better go watch it, you know. It's so powerful if you, if you can see some, you see, it's not just about putting on your vision, but can you sit still for a minute and actually envision, imagine, or just see yourself working in that thing that you've put on your vision board? Can you, can you allow yourself see it? Can you allow yourself feel it? And I know I'm emphasizing on feeling, I'm a feeler, and I'm sorry, but you know, but if you cannot even feel, if you're not a heavy feeler, can you, can you see it? Can you allow your mind wander around it and just see it? Because see, the, the, there's the whole neuroscience and psychology to this thing. And it's, it's a lot more. We can, we can stay here and start talking about it. I was too curious. I, I can't look at many books I read about it because I just wanted to know right? There's so much that goes on to it. And what I start to find is that all these, you know, bodies of knowledge, of course, God is the beginning of it. So they are not so far off. God is the source of it. If you want healing, can you start to imagine yourself feel healed? There is that, there is the spiritual part, there is the faith, but there's so much size to it. The moment you put your mind there, your, your spirit has the ability to generate new information about that thing. He has to have, he has the ability to tell you new things about what you can drink, what you can eat, things you can do to actually make that healing come to pass. Look, Ijoma, it's not impossible. It is very, very possible. Just put it on there. Allow yourself feel it. Allow yourself see it. And then start to use, your mind will start to show you evidences everywhere in the Bible around you of the possibility of that. The moment you can settle into that possibility. It's going to happen. Come on. I love it. Totally. For real. Ijema, that's so good. Do you know that I literally, so I have an experience in 2020. I literally had to put my ear in. I had digestive issue at the end of 2019. P, can you unmute? I can see your hand. Do you want to say something? Okay. I had digestive issues, really bad ones. I was like losing weight and it was so bad and embarrassing you know I was working in the corporate place you know as embarrassing as people would think that maybe you have HIV that kind of thing and I discovered that I was so afraid to eat that was I mean it's the story anyway in my vision board I had to put it there to say that I am not afraid to eat I can eat as much as I can I only just eat healthy that changed everything for me I realized that I could eat eat whatever I want what way to do you use Anyway, I've said what I wanted to say. I love you. Anyway, so yes, you can put your healing in your. <laughs> you can put your healing in your vision board. Thank you very much, Hajara. Thank you very much, Christy. I'm blessed to have you. I'm blessed. And this community is also blessed to have you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Jojo, I'm coming for you. We can't take more questions. We can't take so much. Um, um, What's it called right now? I promise you at the end of the year, maybe we will do some auditing that both of them will come. If they are not now very international that we are, we don't have bookings in their calendars any longer. Um, next week um, is going to be exciting again. I mean, we have very good teaching moments um, slated for the year to ensure that you are able to achieve your goals, just to ensure that you plan your Saturdays very well. One of the things that helped me is to set like a recurring calendar that my alarms go, go um, off. And there is no excuse really for folks that are in the West African time zone, you know, it's 10 a.m. for you. For folks like some of us, it's about 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. So there's really no excuse when you really want to build. That's another thing. The part of setting up your vision goal is just a part of planting the seed. How about watering it, you know? That is very important, trust me. Okay, so for, for instance, Chrissy and I have a relationship where we can talk. There are some watering that we do in that kind of thing. I can jump into HP's DM. I should have those kind of people that you can do as well, belong to a community, and that helps. Thank you very much once again. Thank you for um, staying overboard in time. I hope it was worth your time. I'll stop recording now and see you next week, uh, Saturday. Some of us will still be here because I want to read all the chats to ensure that I didn't miss out anything. Okay, and then I'll save the chat. Thank you, folks. God bless you. Have a wonderful Saturday.